Now that you've determined the number of trials you're going to do in order to keep a handle on your statistical uncertainties, the next step is to determine what's a good number of oscillations for each trial. So remember, what we're doing is we're doing a number of trials, each one with a number of oscillations. So now you've determined how many trials you're going to do. The next step is to determine how many oscillations. And for this particular part of the experiment, I'm going to recommend that you do a pretty short pendulum length for this, because that's just a tip. So a short pendulum length will, will be probably what you want to use here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a sheet to our analysis workbook. So here's the second page of our workbook that will focus on the number of oscillations and figuring out how many oscillations we want to do for each trial. You know, you, you, you guess some number of oscillations and use that to figure out how many trials. But now that you figured out how many trials, we should go back and really think if the number of oscillations we chose is actually sort of the optimum number. So again, reminder, you want to use a, a short pendulum length for this. i give you that much of a hint. And you've already determined the number of trials. So however many trials you've determined is the right number is how many columns you'll have here. Uh, five is what I've got, but it's probably more than that. And then you're going to choose a different number of oscillations uh, to time. So maybe two to get started, you know, just one, two and you'll time how long it takes to do two oscillations, and you'll do that however many trials you've decided to do. And from there, you can get an average and a standard deviation. Then you'll try a different number of trial oscillations, maybe a couple of different ones, and each time you're determining the average total time and the standard deviation in the total time. From there, you can go and get the average period and the standard deviation in that period because you know how many oscillations you had. So you can use that and the average total time to get the average period. And from there, you can sort of get a percent uncertainty on the period. We know how to do percent uncertainty. We've explored it several times throughout the series of labs as the standard deviation over the average. And so you can, you can calculate that percent uncertainty as you go. And from there, you'll ultimately be able to figure out sort of what a good number of oscillations probably is for this experiment.